Oh my God, this one is funny. And this time helped us realize how smart Vinny is. Hello, my fellow sniffers. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Jersey. Take a very good look at her before she jumps out of the video because once she realizes that she's on camera, she is going to bolt. And this is Leo. Say hi to the camera, Leo. Leo's like, that's nice. I just want hugs and kisses and cuddles. Today, we have a really fun video for you guys, and I think it's gonna be an interesting video as well. We are gonna get into the top 10 worst bites that I have ever gotten from these birds or any other bird. And some of the bites that I'm gonna include in there happen to other people in my house, but they were just so memorable, I have to share them with you. And I wanna thank Pistol Girl for this video idea. I read her comment one day and I never forgot it. She basically wanted to know what my worst bites were and how they felt. And I think also how I got them to heal. Wow, Jersey, I'm so excited that you're excited about being in the video. It's like you know you're a star. Okay, so we're gonna get right into it. But before I get into it, I just want to tell you two things. For those of you who are new here, Jersey, yes, she has anxiety. She is a plucker. My birds are rescues. I feel like I need to address that because sometimes it's in the comments. And the second thing I wanna do before we get right into this video Video is give a shout out to a very special sniffer named Luca Heidebrecht. I really hope I said that correctly. But here's the thing, Luca. You sent me a Christmas card or a holiday card. And I know it's been a while, but I just wanted to thank you because your card came at the perfect time. I was reading comments and I don't even remember now. See, this just goes to show how you should just let things roll off your back because it just doesn't matter. But I was reading comments and I was just like, I don't even know if I can do this anymore. Sometimes you could see one comment and it could just bother you so much. You're like, I don't want to be on YouTube anymore. And then um, I went to my PO box and I got this card from you and it was just like, yes, of course I want to do YouTube because it's people like you who are so sweet that just make me want to keep on going. So thank you so much. Your card is everything to me. So I just want to let you know that I got it and I hope you see this. So yes, I love you guys so much. All right, let's get right into the video. Oh, Jersey, you're headless. Shh, you have a lot to say now? I tried to put them in some sort of traumatic order with number one being the most traumatic and starting with number 10, but you'll kind of get to see that a lot of them are all kind of equal, especially the ones at the end. So I'm gonna start with the least painful bites I remember, albeit very painful. And before I start with my top 10 bites, don't forget to put in the comments your worst bite that you've ever gotten from your bird and why, because I love reading those and I love hearing them and I think it's great for other people to read them. Okay, now before I get into the official, official top 10 list, I just wanna tell you about this one bite and the reason I didn't add it to the list is because I can't remember exactly why it happened, but I just remember one time my sister getting ripped to shreds by my lesser sulfur crested cockatoo Ty. He's our family bird. And I don't know, he just bit her and I just remember blood everywhere. But the thing is, I don't remember where he bit her and I don't remember why because it was a long, long time ago. So I didn't add it to the list. So let's get right to it. Number 10. Rocky bit my chest. Yeah, he literally bit me right here. I actually do not have a scar, so that's pretty good. It was a long time ago. This is what happened. I don't remember all the details, but I remember Rocky flew, and it was like one of the first times he ever flew in his life. Now, Rocky is a 26-year-old rescue bird. At the time, maybe he was about 24 years old. Birds that large don't generally fly around a lot within a house because they know their boundaries. They can feel that the walls are too tight for their wingspan and for them to have time to really take off. So on this particular day, I don't know why he took off, but it was unusual and he must have gotten scared of something. Very possibly a gardener might have crossed the window. Things like that can happen where a bird can get spooked and he flew and because he wasn't used to flying, although he is flighted, he flew into the glass door. So he hurt himself a little bit. Like that's a lot of mass going into the glass door. So when birds get hurt, they just kind of like 
chill out. He was dazed. Let's just say he was dazed. And so I ran to him and I picked him up and I brought him close to me and I had a good five minutes of like giving him a head massage to like relax him. And then George shows up and he didn't want to look like a cheater. So he bit me right here and of course went to George and acted like the big baby that he is. So I got a little bit of really good attention and love, but I was pretty much abandoned once George came into the picture so that he could be babied by George and not look like a cheater. Number nine. Vinny bit my face after being really loving, by the way. Now, I have this on number nine because it wasn't really that bad of a bite, but it is because when those birds bite, they like latch on. But I knew why he bit me. This is what happened. I was on this movie for like eight days and I did come home every day and George was here taking care of the birds, but obviously like most of them, I am their main flock member. So they love me, especially Vinny. And even though I would come home every day and you guys watch me on Instagram, you see that I shower with my birds. Even if I come home late, I really make time to hang out with them. So even if that means I'm gonna get less sleep, that's what I do. So on this one day, I think I had already been on set for like five days in a row and Vinny was not happy about it, but he didn't let me know quite yet. I had the birds on my shoulder and I was kissing all of them. I had three birds. I think I had Picasso, Jersey, and Vinny. And they were really excited to see me and they were showing in. And we were taking turns, all of us getting a head scratch and a kiss and so forth. And after a good 20 minutes, yeah, it took him 20 minutes to produce his, you know, big bite finale. He just bit me. And the funny thing is I probably have it on video somewhere, but I mean, that was like five phones ago. It was kind of shocking. Like the way he bites, it's like he just goes and you just like, ah! And when a bird bites, you have to like try to stay as still as possible or you could make it worse. And I had like a dent in my skin, but I didn't like, you know, nothing was ripped off. So I was able to go and be on set the next day with makeup. It really wasn't that bad, but man, when a bird bites your lip, it hurts. So he was pretty much angry that I was away for such a long time. On to number eight. Okay, this one didn't happen so long ago, maybe within the last eight months or so, but we had guests over and Rocky, he is like the king of outside. He loves to be outside. He screams to be outside every day. But when he's inside and there's guests over, if anybody goes outside, he gets really upset. He wants to go too. This is Sandy, my doggy. So Rocky wanted to go outside because George and a few of his friends were hanging out, drinking their coffee. So what happens? Rocky shows up at the window, but there's kids around, so I don't really want him walking on the floor. Not because I don't trust Rocky, although you should never 100% trust a bird like that, especially Rocky, because for those of you who don't know, Rocky is my harlequin macaw that had been locked up in a cage for 10 years before we got him. So he has some aggression issues, but mostly because I also don't trust the kids. Like, I don't know if they're gonna approach him, if they're gonna run around, if they're gonna make him nervous. So I picked Rocky up and I took him into the other room and put him on his stand thinking, okay, you could just sit here and watch TV. Well, Rocky did not wanna be on his stand. He wanted to be outside. So the mere fact that I offered him something he didn't want that offended him and he bit me. Ah! And there were guests over. And obviously I don't even scream at this point when I'm bit. I'm just like, you know, trying to stay still because one, you don't want to let them know that it's working if they are angry because any attention is good attention to these birds. And two, if you move your arm when you're getting bit, uh, that's just gonna result in much worse of a bite. So let me show you this bite right here. It's now a scar. It was a beautiful triangle in the shape of a beak. So what do I do for it to heal? Because you asked that as well. George's dad makes this clay mask 100% natural. And the amazing thing about this mask is that if you put it on any wound, it acts kind of like a liquid bandage. It keeps your skin together and keeps it from scarring really bad. And it'll also really help it heal. And so that is normally what I do. But I think on this one, 
one I didn't put the mask on and now I highly regret it because you see that big scar that's there. On to number seven. Number seven is also a rocky bite. <laughs> And this was kind of funny because on this particular day, my sister had a guest over for dinner and this girl is terrified of birds. In fact, I think she's scared of a lot of animals. So I was trying to make everything look just really cool. She's been over the house many times since, but on this day, I could just feel her fear. So here we have this large macaw walking around on the floor and I guess he wanted to come to me or I went to pick him up and maybe Maybe the dog scared him. I don't even know. This is one of the ones that I don't know what exactly happened. I mean, I did at the time. It's just been a while and Rocky bit me so hard. I'm going to show you the scar. It's in such a crazy place. I don't know if you could see it. It's like a, a white line up here. Looks kind of suspicious. He bit me so hard that I just remember keeping my arm in one spot. That's basically what you have to do when you have a bird bite you. You just gotta keep still because you know, you don't wanna make it any worse. And that's why this scar looks really good. One, because I was able to put the mask on this one. So I don't have like any red marks. But here's the funny thing. I just carried on as if nothing happened. Like I was bleeding through everything that I put over this bite, okay? Like, I was just acting like, you know, nothing happened and George was there like, do you want me to put the mask on it? Do you want me to put this? Let's put gauze, let's put this. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm good, okay, we're just gonna like clean up, just like I did with the last bite. This is pretty much how I handle things. And then we'll get to George and how he handles bites and it'll be a whole different story. Which brings me to number six. You guys might know about this one because it happened in a video, but I wasn't filming. Leo bit George. <laughs> Yes, this this sweet little bird here and you want to know why he bit him because Leo is obsessed with children So he had a play date and a young lady named Leah came over and hung out with Leo and George wanted to say hi to her And he made the big mistake of going to hug the little girl when Leo was on her shoulder and Leo just ripped his face from here to here. Like lucky as a mustache. Like at this point, I don't even think George can or should shave. And he definitely couldn't have for a while because like he was, he, I just, he had to like mask himself and glue himself. It was pretty bad. George did admit that like it was 100% his fault because he should have known to not approach. It was just instinct. Someone was here. He wanted to give them a hug and didn't put it all together fast enough. So, but, the one funny thing about that is that George was like done for the day. George was like in the bathroom with the first aid kit. He was just like, I need space and I have to put this on it and oh, and bring me that and not alcohol, but alcohol wipes. And like, you know, just like being a big baby, I call it baby ascitis, which I clearly don't have because when Rocky bit me much worse, I just continued on with life and cleaned it. And he's like, I have a headache now, but I turned on the cameras and he's a Leo. So he kind of like got into it and it kind of helped him a lot. But man, like does he handle a bite differently? Although I will say bites on the lips, they hurt a lot. Okay, number five. I did a whole story time Sunday on this one because I just thought it was really kind of funny how the circumstances happen. So check out my video, it should show up like right here where you could click on it and watch it. It's a story time Sunday about Ty biting me. <laughs> it's just really funny. Ty is our lesser sulfur crested cockatoo that lives with my brother. And he bit me for a very good reason in bird language, a reason that's not my fault. But this is just one of the popular reasons a bird can bite you. And by the way, I will have another video on other reasons that birds bite you, so don't forget to check that out. I'm gonna try to tell the short version of this story for those of you who have heard it before, very sorry. I went to Houston, Texas, and they had all these beautiful birds in their backyard. My parents, like, just 
wild bird. They have cardinals and blue jays, things that like I don't really get to see here. We have scrub jays. We don't really get these beautiful like, I, I don't know, I just haven't seen them in my backyard. But anyway, I was so excited and I made this tea and I was like looking outside and my bird Ty loves to be outside. And I wanted my dad to unlock his cage because Ty already was outside. But since no one was outside to watch him, he's obviously like safely locked up. I approach with my tea and I tell my dad, please unlock this because I'm gonna go sit with Ty. And my dad says, no, you cannot go out there. There is mosquitoes everywhere. One going to bite you. You will not like it outside. And I'm like, dad, I got my tea. It's gonna be beautiful, just unlock Ty. And then he goes, and Ty is going to bite you too. And I don't want you to scream. Ah! if Ty comes and then I'm going to be worried and like I just put my foot down and like the joke in my family is that when I was born I became my dad's boss so what did he do he unlocked Ty and I proceeded to have my tea and it was just beautiful there were like birds and cardinals and everything everywhere I just loved it okay and then a mosquito bit me and I'm like oh my god and then another mosquito bit me and I'm like oh my god now in Los Angeles mosquitoes are not really a thing like you know we just don't really have to deal with them often so these bugs are biting me all over and ties on me and I have to put the tea down and Ty is just not excited about this and I don't want to make him nervous by moving around too much so I'm just trying to you know handle myself and all I want to do is like scratch the itch so I go and take Ty and try to put him back in the cage but he was not happy he didn't want to be in the cage obviously he just got out we were just gonna relax and so like I go to lock it and my pinky's sticking out and he just bites it oh my god like just I swear I don't even think you guys could see this scar I'm gonna try but it's basically like this white scar that just blends in so I, and then I started screaming and my dad comes over and he goes what happened he goes I told you I go but I wanted to see the birds and the bees and the trees and he shuts the door pulls up the blinds and goes look from here <laughs> And in all my misery of the bite, I don't know, I just thought that was the funniest thing. So that is bite number five. Number four. Oh my God, guys, this bite was from my African gray George. For those of you who don't know Georgia, he has passed. He is the whole reason that I made this entire channel after he passed. And so you wouldn't think there'd be a bite as prominent. Did you just bite me? As prominent as this one right up here at number four from my beloved bird. But yes, there is. And this one was pretty, um, pretty pretty unheard of. So I don't know what I was doing. I think we must have been eating breakfast or something and I went to give my bird a kiss or he wanted something that was in my mouth, which obviously, just so you guys know, our saliva is toxic to birds. So you really don't want them going into your mouth. Although you'll find like a lot of birds really try to do this. So when I kiss my birds, I'm always kissing the top of their beak. So I don't know how this happened, but somehow he got a hold of my tongue. Okay. I don't know if I was eating something, but this bird. Oh, wow. Do you see that guy? There's these crows outside, so Jersey's getting really excited. This bird sliced my tongue, okay? He just sliced it, and it, it hurt, and it was bleeding everywhere so bad that I didn't know what happened. Like, it happened so fast. Like, birds can move very fast, so you have to be very familiar with their body language, but even then, sometimes you just don't know what's gonna hit you, and it was just kind of like, I must have went, hey, and like, he grabbed it and like, pulled it, and this is, George was not an aggressive bird. This was obviously years ago at this point, so I don't remember the why. Usually, it's very important to figure out the why so that you know know what you did to prevent it could be anything and I'll have a video out on that as well like a really fun one I went to the sink and just like blood was pouring out of my mouth and I had a photo shoot for the cover of a movie that I had done and 
and I went there with like ice in my tongue and I just remember really legitimately not being able to talk because normally I'm like whatever I'll be fine and I just powered through things but I just could not talk the pain was on real okay but i'm telling you guys this because i just want you to know that like no matter how perfect you are how much you understand birds sometimes things can surprise you and there's always outside factors so you just don't know what's going to happen number three Oh my god, guys, number three. Another African Grey, but not George. It was an African Grey named Roxy that we had rescued. And Roxy was kind of with us all in all a very short time because Roxy flew away and we didn't find her. And that will be a story for another day. But basically, Roxy we found Roxy on Craigslist. It was a person trying to exchange this bird for like something stupid. And I just felt really bad and I showed it to George and George fell in love with her and we just went and paid him for the bird so that we could rescue the bird. Roxy was a plucker. Roxy was just in really bad condition when we got her. Like she was on the floor of this apartment where um, there were all sorts of things. Like we just like cleaned that cage out when we got Roxy, but Roxy immediately loved George. This bird loved men right away. I had a roommate at the time and my roommate was like, oh, so who's the new bird? She came to me right away, but Roxy did not like me. And I guess I didn't have long enough to really work with Roxy. I was trying. So one day, Roxy and I were getting along and I was working with her and everything was great. And I was alone because you always want to work with the bird you're trying to bond with, especially if the bird is bonded with somebody else you want to work with that bird alone without the person that they are more bonded to because they also don't want to feel like what are you doing that's that's uh no Jersey, did anyone tell you you're on camera? So birds don't wanna feel like they're betraying their partner. And unfortunately, the way we have birds in captivity, they often look to us as their partners, something that is really hard to prevent. Once George came into the picture, I don't know if he just had walked in, Roxy just launched at me and bit my face from here to here, kind of like what Leo did to George. And it looked bad. I am so lucky it healed like on the line here, but it looks so bad. And the worst part was I had an audition the next day for General Hospital. I mean, it looked bad. I looked kind of like it just looked like my whole lip went up like this. It, it looked so bad and uh, it just looked so terrible. And I didn't even know if I should like warn them ahead of time. So I had to like go into my audition and pretend like I didn't know that I looked so weird I probably should have addressed it because after that audition my manager literally got feedback and it was not as pretty as her picture I think I cried for a very long time and then my manager said don't worry honey they love you on a Tuesday hate you on a Friday and he didn't mean me he just meant in general in the industry and it's so true because later on I think exactly a year later I went in and the same guy loved me so that story stands out very prominently to me because uh, it came with a year long of trauma until the day that I did go in there and felt good about myself and and did well and like felt like I redeemed myself in a Away. Okay, number two. Oh my God, this one is funny. This is a time that Vinny bit George. <laughs> And this time helped us realize how smart Vinny is. So Vinny was with us for a little while before we knew exactly how his personality was. We named him Vinny after the movie My Cousin Vinny because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I'm from New Jersey, so it just like was very fitting. But little did I know that naming my bird Vinny would make him out to be the gangster that he is. For those of you new to the channel and don't know who Vinny is, 
Um, you need to check the Vinny files and also my videos with my subtitled talking bird because you'll just love Vinny. Oh, Vinny's a gangsta and Vinny is the bird on this shirt. This is my merch, by the way. I love it. It's raining out, so it doesn't even matter. I wear it every day regardless. And you can buy the merch in the description below. Here's what happened. Vinny and George's relationship always was kind of weird in the beginning. There was a time when George said it's either me or the bird and I was like, well, I mean, who do you think I'm gonna choose? The bird. I don't care what anybody says. My birds are here for life, right? I made a commitment to them, so that's not gonna happen. Vinny used to like chase George's shoe. So like George would be walking and Vinny would like attack his shoe. And so George would like try to walk to a spot where maybe I could get Vinny off. One day they were having a really good conversation. Vinny wanted to go outside. It's not that we understood Vinny at that point at all. We just knew that he wanted to go outside because he tried to follow George to the door. So we sat down and just talked to Vinny. Me, George, and Vinny just sat and talked. And for a while, you could see that George was suddenly able to pet Vinny. Vinny was coming around. Vinny was acting like this. And Vinny was just acting all cute with him. And we were shocked because usually we hadn't really had him long enough to sit down and take the time to like work on their bonding and it was amazing like george hadn't been able to pet his head before or anything so i was excited well george starts asking him questions and telling him you know i really love you Vinny, and i want you to know that and i hope you feel loved and all of this nonsense and it's going on for about 10 minutes and Vinny is very loving and then george goes but you can't go outside. And Vinny just latched onto his chin and made a hole, like really big hole. Would not let go. And the thing is, there was nothing that changed in those 10 minutes except George told Vinny no and Vinny felt it. And Vinny was like, oh hell no, you're not gonna be telling me no. And that was it. Like George was freaked out because this bird, <laughs> Yeah, did the crow land right there? We gotta see what George looks like with his face shaved because he is all sorts of messed up between Leo and Vinny. That's when we realized Vinny understands a lot and it was really trippy and then we started paying attention to what we said around him. Now, I always believe that birds understand what you're saying, especially if they've been in your house for a very long time. And remember, birds are very, very emotional beings. They pick up your emotions, they understand your feelings, and they tend to absorb absorb them and kind of repeat them back to you in a way. That's why cockatoos get very excited when people get excited and when people get loud. And some birds like that and some birds that gives them anxiety. But at that point, we just realized that Vinny, without even a change in, without even a change in tone or anything, he just was like, nobody tells me no. And that was a pretty bad bite. I mean, that bird just latched on. So that's why that's number two. Number one worst bite of all time. Now I can't say that this is officially worse than all of the bites, cause I mean, George biting my tongue was pretty bad, but this one is fresh, okay? This just happened, and it's probably the worst bite I've ever gotten in recent times, especially the way it happened, because there's a lot of things about this that just, oh, oh my God. It was by Rocky, and it was recently, and it was very, very unexpected. It would have been expected, except for the fact that he lunged at me. So let me go back. You guys know I have an outdoor aviary and a lot of you ask me, how do I get my birds outside? Well, a lot of them, I just take them out there and put them out there like Jersey, she's not flighted. Um, Leo, he hasn't really exhibited much flight behavior, so sometimes I just kind of like take him out there and hold his foot, but my really flighted birds that really like could just get nervous at any moment, I take them out there safely in a carry-on. So what I do with Vinny is I put him in his carry-on, he doesn't mind, he likes it, he gets in there, and I take him outside, and then I hide the carry-on because Rocky loves carry-ons, okay? 
Rocky loves dog crates and all of those things because he wants to like do his foraging slash nesting behavior in there. So when Rocky first came to us, she gave us a dog crate with him and he loved his dog crate. Of course, he chewed it all up. So I eventually threw it away and I didn't really want him to get all into, you know, nesting behavior. But we had come such a long way with Rocky and it didn't seem to really affect his actual behavior. Needless to say, he didn't have a crate for a long time. Since I've been carrying Vinny out in the crate, he has been chasing it down. Like whenever he sees it, he walks up to it. So that's why I always hide it because obviously it's this little crate. He's gonna chew it to pieces. So I hide it. And by the way, since I have gotten Rocky a little carrier and I'll explain why in that video so you can go watch it and see, I'll put the link below, but you'll just see how he loves his carrier and my reasons for actually giving him one again. But basically what happened was I was carrying this carrier that he's obsessed with and Vinny was in it. It's not even his carrier. Vinny was so cute in the carrier that when I saw George, George was right next to Rocky, I stopped while I was carrying it. I didn't know Rocky was behind me. If I would have known Rocky was behind me, it would have been a whole different ball game. It was just like, I wasn't aware. I was just trying to get from point A to point B. I'm carrying Vinny is all locked up and George goes, who's in there? And I go, it's little Vinny. Look at, we trapped a little gangsta. Like it's a joke. I'm going to take him outside and he's going to play with all his stuff. And behind me was Rocky. Like, I guess I walked in front of Rocky and George was here. George is looking at me and suddenly I feel Rocky bite me okay I'm gonna show you the scar because it's fresh do you guys see it right here and I have a very tiny wrist okay and he bit me and I'm holding the carrier I didn't drop it at all because like Vinny's my priority and I just want to let you guys know not only was I wearing this but if you guys remember I went to surprise Tina my fan and now friend I always consider you guys my friends especially after I meet you guys she had given me this red robe and I was wearing that on top for his bite to go through all that he basically jumped on the carrier bit me and I stayed very still even though I felt like he was literally crunching my bone I stayed very still because if you move you alarm them more and then they'll be aggressive back and then on top of that you could hurt yourself a lot more you could rip your skin so I I don't know why under this kind of pressure I'm so good at that but I just stayed still and then I remember feeling him bite another spot and that was because it took George a minute to understand what was happening because usually I know how this story sounds but usually I'm the one with most of the control over Rocky like I know what he wants he listens to me he lets me transfer for him. He lets me pick him up. Obviously, George loves on him the most, and that's like the way their bond is, and George can do anything. But like, in terms of discipline, Rocky is really good with me. So it was kind of shocking and took both of us a minute to understand what was happening until George basically got him off. I didn't drop Vinny, but this is just so fresh in my head because like, it just happened. And because my wrist is so tiny, you couldn't even tell how swollen it was because it just looked like a normal wrist. It was really swollen and hurt so much that I slept for a good long time that night because that's what I do when I get in pain. I just like sleep. But again, George tried to put ice on it and I was like, no, I'm fine. And then we did put some ice on it and then I still went about my regular day because I don't know. I just handle these things well. It was kind of uh, frightening, a little bit shocking. Obviously a mistake on my part because I'd walked by with this specific carrier, like specific, specific one. It's like, he doesn't even see it often, but he gets very possessive over it over the years. Like he just loves it. He's never even gotten to come near this carrier in terms of like being in it. He won't fit in it. It doesn't even open like you can go in it. It doesn't look like a tent or a nest. It's just a closed box that he just loves the look of it because it looks like his old carrier that he had, which he's very territorial bird because he's been locked in his cage for so long. You know, you always got to be on guard with birds. You always got to know like who's around you, how close to have the bird in proximity to you. If someone else that they hate is going to be nearby, there's a lot of things to know. That's why I am making or have made, I don't know by the time this video comes out, but I have a video of all of the reasons that a bird may bite you and your reasons of 
why birds may bite. So don't forget to check that out. For those of you who love my Vinny Gang shirt, link is below. You could totally order this. It's the softest, most fitted, most beautiful shirt in the world. And if you're afraid I don't have your size, um, I do do special orders. So just hit me up in an email. You'll see it on my site. Oh, baby, you're down here. You're so cute. Yes, you're so, so cute. I love you guys so much. If you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon. It will help me produce more videos for you and get more out in a timely manner. I love Patreon. I'm having such a good time because I love to just like engage with those of you who are there. And if you have questions about biting, please go on Parrot Station. It's my Facebook group where people can help you answer. I get so many emails from you guys and all I do is feel guilty when I can't answer them, but it's hard because it's like, I don't have a picture, I don't have info about your bird, I don't know who's around in the house. It really takes a consultation for me to be able to really truly answer your questions. And I always feel bad because I get so many emails and I can't physically answer them all. Like I just can't. I don't want you guys to think that I ignored you or answered someone else. I just would love if you guys would go on Parrot Station. There's a lot of people that can answer you right away. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for being a part of my Sniffer family. And for those of you who are hashtag flighters, we love you so much and Jersey wants to say bye. Right, Jersey? Yay! Don't forget to let me know your worst bite ever. I'm gonna be reading it in the comments or your favorite part of the video. I love you guys so much. Bye!